Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I wanted to do my mid-year reading wrap up today. I wanted to film this for ages and it's just not been far enough through the year for me to be able to film it yet. Um, and as we're nearing the end of June, I was like, yes, I can do it. Um, so that's exciting. I wanted to chat through some of the goals I set first and I didn't set a lot of reading goals. I set more life goals because COVID and everything else. I'll link the video up in the card. Um, so if you're interested, to see what I spoke about there, you can. Foster is happy to be in the video. <laughs> She's becoming very like YouTube orientated at the minute. Every time I put the camera on, she becomes enormously affectionate. Um, yeah, so the, the things that I wanted to try and do this year were less about reading and more about booktube. So one of them was to keep replying to every comment that I get um, and I did kind of caveat that for really old videos I don't tend to reply. Um, weirdly some of my best videos are like really old ones like 2016 videos and I still get people commenting on that like every week. Um, so other than those I have replied to every comment I think. Um, the new like YouTube thing makes it a lot easier, you can sort them by ones you haven't replied to. Um, so that's good, I've managed to do that. And then my next aim was to CC every video um, and I'm pretty sure every video is CC'd. There was one where, oh my goodness, it was like 40 minutes long and the auto captioning wasn't working. So I had to do it all from typing, but I've managed it. I'm, I've tried really hard this year to make all of my video content accessible. I'm sure there should be, there's more I should be doing on like Instagram and stuff, but I don't, I don't really know what I should be doing. So I will endeavor to do some um, research so that I can figure out if there's anything else I'm missing that um, makes people hard, makes it hard for people, sorry, to access my content because of what I'm, what I'm not doing. Um, yeah, CCing has actually been something I feel like I've got better at having done it for six months. Um, it does take a bit of time, but I think I've kind of figured out my way around it. So it doesn't take so much time that it feels like challenging to still upload as much and um, so I'm really proud of that so hopefully that's been nice even if you just watch with subtitles um, sometimes or whether you need them hopefully that has helped and then my last goal was to update my reading spreadsheet with books as I read them I haven't done that too well I would say I'm probably updating it every two weeks but it does make it a bit of a faff when I do it so I would say that when I haven't done um, I was maybe a bit overly ambitious because quite often I'll pick books up like in the middle of the day or like late in the evening when I haven't got my laptop and I can't bother to go and fetch my laptop to put it in. Um, but those were the, goal the only goals I set like reading wise. I put my books in as 52, the same as always. Um, last year I only read 70 books in the year, which I know isn't like a small amount, but I normally read, like we averaged out, Tom and I, when we were on leave, and I think I averaged out to about 157 as my average. Um, so I kind of feel like that one, that one this year has been sorted already. Uh, but I thought I'd do what I normally do, which is I'd have a look at my stats. So I'm just gonna try and navigate cat and laptop at the same time and talk a bit through my reading stats. So, Foswat, <laughs> I know you're very lovely and very affectionate. So, so far this year, I have read 101 books and we're not quite at the end of June yet. So if I kind of keep reading at the same pace, she does this in work meetings as well. Um, if I keep reading at the same pace, I should maybe hit 200 this year. So I might read a little bit more than my average year, um, which is really good. I've read 27, no, yes, 27,000 pages so far. Um, so my average pages are around 300 still. I've listened to nine audiobooks, which is more than in the average year for me. My average star rating is 3.7, so a little bit higher than normal. Um, and I've already spent £780 on books. Um, I'm kind of okay with it. I feel like last year I didn't spend that much money on books, so this year I'm spending more. But I probably do need to, like ask for more books for review. I quite often am buying books like the minute they come out. Um, and I'm very lucky to be able to ask for books for review, but I've only asked for one book for review in the last six months. So I think maybe I should feel confident doing that. I haven't really asked for them because I've been worried I won't read them as fast. So I haven't really felt like it was fair to ask for them. 
Um, I have got some books reviewed. I've had some people who contacted me, but in terms of me like reaching out to publishers, I've been a bit lax of doing that. Um, the average cost of my books have gone up to £9.50, and I'll talk about why that is when we kind of get to that point. Um, she's impossible. <laughs> I mean, hopefully she oh god apologies feline technical issues um yeah so my reading across the year we didn't start out too strong like february and read nine books but march april and may i've read over 20 books every month and i've read 16 so far in june i think i'll probably maybe read 19 this month um and my average pages have been like yeah kind of similarly matched in terms of genre, I've got a kind of okay split. Um, I'm mostly reading non-fiction, fiction and literary fiction. So how those are defined, it feels very floaty. Um, I have read four poetry books, um, so that's quite cool. I've also read four, uh, three sci-fis and three thrillers. So I've read a little bit of genre fiction in there as well. Um, star rating wise, my most common rating is four stars, then three stars, then five stars. I've only given four books one stars, which this year I've decided means DNFing. <clears throat> Two means I like force my way through it. Um, so that's pretty good. I think I have been quite cautious this year in what I'm picking up in terms of my interests. Uh, the vast majority is new books, which it always is, but 69% were 2016 to 2020 and 22% were published this year. So that's quite a lot for, you know, reading in that first six months. My diversity feels fairly okay. I've kind of, as I've been typing them in, I've thought it's not been very good. So 53, I haven't listed as having a specific diversity category, like in the story or with the author, um, which means 47% do. So kind of nearly 50-50, that's not just like no content in there that lists with any kind of protected characteristic. Um, I've read 99% adult books. We know that I do this. Um, and I haven't read a lot in translation this year, it's like so far, which I've, I'm kind of fine with. Like, I thought when I was looking at this, I'd mind more, but I don't really. I feel like I've read more English authors this year, which I've really enjoyed. Um, so it's kind of not felt like I've missed out that much. And I think I'm doing, a, a, I think because last year's reading year was so unsuccessful because my brain was everywhere, I'm 100% mood reading this year. Um, and that's okay if I'm not hearing of lots of translated fiction that kind of immediately appeals, like really like eat it up straight away type stuff. That kind of feels okay. Yeah, 33% of what I've read has been from UK authors. That was more like 40% earlier on in the year, but it must have shifted like over the last month and a half. Um, and 38% is from the US. So it's like a third, third split, near enough, between UK, US and other. The other categories have been spread out like quite a lot, which is kind of quite usual for me. Um, but I would say like, it tends to be around the similarish countries, so Canada, France, Ireland, Italy, Japan, um, South Korea. They had one unknown this time. There was someone whose country I couldn't find anywhere on any of their social media, on anything. So I've got one person that I didn't know where they live. Um, I read, so far, I've read 63% has been white and 37% has been people of colour. I think that's better than I did last year. I can't remember off the top of my head, it feels slightly better than I did last year, but definitely the latter end of this month I've noticed I've picked up more white authors. Um, so I need to kind of get my head in it. I think one of the things I'm doing this year is I'm mood reading, but I'm kind of finding like topics of interest. So at the moment I've just read two books that are about disability and that's something I've read like nothing about, so I'm suddenly like diving into this new topic. So sometimes when I do that, I find I have to kind of go, oh, okay, remember that the system is going to be weighted towards white people, look for people of colours, books in there too. Um, so I need to remind myself to do that when I go down like a interest train or like a new learning about things train. Um, then 86, oh, this one's quite interesting, 86% of the books I've read have been by authors I've never read before. And I do that a lot, like I'll pick up one book by an author, I'll like it, and then I never pick up another book by them again. Um, which is quite interesting, I wonder whether I should 
maybe make a video where I go around and look at like what were my five star books um, by an author and then see if I've read anything else by them and if I haven't maybe like what's my second like experience around with them like. Uh, women, I've read 80% women, no sorry 78% women, 21% male and one non-binary author. And then as I said like looking at my bought books which is the last bit, I'm trying to do this like fairly quick quick fire around. Um, it's been, I just kind of split it mostly into fiction, non-fiction, so 59% fiction, 29% non-fiction, 5% short stories, 5% poetry. Um, so like, yeah, I'm surprised non-fiction's as low as it is. I often, I felt this year a lot, like, oh my god, this is the only non-fiction I've got, I've got to hold on to it. So maybe I need to keep introducing more non-fiction as I go, because I have felt the lack of it. It's normally like a bit higher than that. Um, in terms of spend across the months, the last two months, April and May, were quite expensive. This is more back in line, but it's still quite expensive. I think because I'm being able to read more, I'm like, ah, I can spend my money on books. Um, but I did say that the average cost for books gone up this year from last year. And that's because I'm trying to reduce my reliance on Amazon as a book source. Um, I've spoken about it in other videos, but we are a minimum of half an hour's drive, so an hour round trip to any in-person bookshops. And with COVID, that hasn't really been a thing. So last year, the convenience of Amazon and the lack of any, like, we have no independence at all within like an hour radius. We've got a water, one Waterstones that's like 30 minutes away, one that's 45 minutes away. So there's just like, it was tough last year, Amazon ate me alive. And I became quite reliant on it. Um, so I've been trying to buy more from Waterstones, which is, the two most local shop bookshops we have um, and 40 of the books that I've bought have been from Waterstones and only 15 from Amazon which is much better than it was last year and then the others are from a, like a mix of things so like foils, blackwells, directly from publishers, independent bookshops, some for review, some gifts, um, foils which I know is connected to Waterstones but yeah, so it's, I've been trying to do bookshops over Amazon um, and I know lots of people will probably be mad at me and be like, why did you ever buy from Amazon and why are you still buying some things from Amazon? Um, I think like partly it's just the habit of it. Um, it's also COVID, I think, had a really big impact on it and not living anywhere where you can... I have no access to books apart from ordering them online um, unless we get in the car and go drive somewhere. I think that can make it easier to do that and I think we also like as a household can be quite reliant on Amazon for like sudden emergency needs that you have when something breaks and you need like I don't know like a doormat or something and you know that none of the places where you live sell doormats and you're like okay am I gonna <laughs> am I going to try and look for a local artisan <laughs> doormat maker and go and find them or like all the kind of stuff like uh, Argos and stuff doesn't deliver here so you're like, okay, what do we do? Or are you gonna go, oh, we'll just order one on Amazon. So yeah, we we, we do have a bad habit of that. But what I'm trying to do this year, <laughs> now I've finished beating myself up, is always go on Waterstones first. So the ones that I've got from Amazon were either pre-orders that weren't on the Waterstones system yet, or they were books that took like upwards of two months to get from Waterstones to me. Um, and I couldn't find in another place. So there's a couple like that. Open Water, actually, I've ordered. I ordered that at the end of April from Waterstones and I'm still waiting. So for me, where I've got like a wait of more than a month, it feels okay to use Amazon for it. I think that light bulb just went. Just suddenly got very dark. Oh my, my eyes are broken. Um, but yeah, so that, those are kind of things I've been trying to do this year. I feel like it is working, functioning. Um, I like these little stat update videos. I'm gonna try and be quiet now because I wanted to make this short, I always ramble on. Um, but I'm always interested to know if you guys use the spreadsheet, if you use um, LitHub, I think it's LitHub, no, it's not LitHub, Storygraph, I've never used it. I feel like I might get converted, but if you like get stats and gather stats from places, How's, how's your reading year been so far? Is there anything you're going to change between now and the end of the year to balance it off? Um, I think for me, I want to make sure that when I'm going down those interest lines, I'm also finding um, 
non-white authors to add in to my repertoire um, and I also think that I want to try and balance my non-fiction out a little bit more. I think I'd be really happy reading 50-50 but I often hear about more fiction from booktube and like internet and twitter and instagram and stuff than I do non-fiction. Um, so maybe next year it could be an aim to try and read 50-50. That could be really interesting. Um, but overall I've been really happy with it. I feel like I've got space and time and headspace and funds to be able to read like I am at the moment and that feels really nice and really comfortable. Um, yeah, so that was me checking in on my reading stats for this year as we are halfway through and I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye!